So um, this is actually the last meta meditation with me live for some time uh, because it is coming up to the annual monastic retreat, the Vasa period. I'll have a little bit extra time away also, but a very nice program for you all in my absence. So please do continue to participate on a Sunday uh, with some Dhamma talks, probably weekly from Bikunis and Bikus. And uh, who knows, I don't know if they'll practice meta, but they might certainly teach about it and you'll have opportunity to ask your questions too. So, but for now, this is the last one that we're having together. And um, I don't know, I asked here in the monastery if anybody has any suggestions for the day and there were some interesting ones, but I just wonder if anyone here has particular suggestions or what you'd like to focus on and see if I can weave it in. We normally go somehow through the different categories and uh, it's just a matter of emphasis really whether we spend more time with ourselves or a loved person or a so-called neutral person of course it's only uh, the feelings we have for a person there's really no person that's neutral or difficult or loved it's just our relationship to them so but that way we um, enable ourselves to work through some of these habitual reactive tendencies to uh, that which we perceive as pleasant or less pleasant. So um, anyway, any suggestions, please write it in the box. Otherwise, I have my own idea of something slightly different. But, uh, election matter. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go straight for the hardest thing. Huh? <laughs> it matter to all beings, regardless of their political. Is that what you mean? Or meta, somebody here said we should send meta kind of to people so they vote what we think they should vote. <laughs> of course he was right, I'm sure, in terms of the ethical uh, elements of who he wants to vote for. But, uh, or a meta manifesto. <laughs> oh, I should have thought this of that earlier. Yes, elections, the world needs it. Oh my goodness. I don't know how to do election meta. Hmm. You put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, goodness. Election matter. Help. View. View. All those with other views. I don't know if we can be that specific. And remember, we're not all from England. So it's only elections here in England. I don't know about the rest of the world. US elections. Uh, U.S. Not elections now? No, no, November. November. Well, but they oh, right, okay. Elections. There's always some election or other coming <laughs> up. May the polit politicians be wheel turners. Yeah, which kind of wheel turner? <laughs> May the most peaceful candidate win. <laughs> All right, well, let's close our eyes and just see what happens. Yeah. Okay, in France as well. Mm. Okay. <sighs> And I notice we have people here with chronic health conditions, as well as people who are fairly healthy. Please find a posture that's actually comfortable for you. Even if you have to walk during this meditation, it's okay. And if there is some pain or some gas or whatever it might be, really try and relax with it. See if you can maybe do some deep breathing into your belly in the beginning, just to calm down. So when you're ready, just gently closing your eyes and turning inside. Taking any warmth that you experience, the warmth of companionship, connection of being together bringing that inward and recognizing that right now you are safe you are with spiritual friends including yourself You've offered yourself this gift of peace, of space just to be.
And to gently incline your mind towards the intentions of loving kindness, even for those who you may find difficult, which perhaps includes yourself. <clears throat> so just gently feeling into your body. and allowing it part by part to relax. Perhaps beginning with your awareness at the top of the head. Imagining that awareness like gentle sunshine, just bathing the whole scalp area. Or maybe if it's warm, imagining it like a gentle breeze. Spreading across the head the brow, the eyes, allowing those eyeballs to just rest in their sockets, allowing all those little muscles around the eyes to increase <coughs> and let go. The jaw, the cheeks to become soft, the throat and the neck to relax. Noticing if you're holding any tension in your shoulders, usually the place where tension tends to lodge. Or maybe just circling your shoulders Lifting them up and allowing them to drop. And if you can actually hear my shoulders, they're very crackly. Just giving them permission to release. And adjusting your hands in response. So from the shoulders down through the arms to the hands and the fingertips. The entire arm is relaxed. Noticing any sensations. Right down to your fingertips. And allowing this sunshine or Breeze to soak through your chest. Your belly. Down to the seat of the trunk, your buttocks. Down your back. giving all those muscles in the back permission to relax. If there are any sensations that feel unpleasant to you, just giving them space to be. And 
observing them with tender care, with eyes of kindness, the way a mother would gaze at her child, perhaps hurt their knee. Giving assurance to that child that they'll be fine. And feeling into your legs, your thighs, your knees, making sure your knees are as comfortable as they can be. You can still adjust your knees at this time. Imagining your knees just soaking in this beautiful sunshine, relaxing as they would in a deck chair or floating in a pool. No holding, no tension at all. And feeling into your ankles, your heels, the top of the foot, the soles and the toes. See if you can give caring attention to each and every toe. And just widening your awareness to include the whole body, the whole body sitting, mass of changing sensations, fleeting emotions. and fill this awareness with kindness, with a sense of warmth, friendship, acceptance. Perhaps sensing that kindness surrounding you as though allowing your entire body to gently expand. So your whole body were breathing through each and every little pore of the skin. Receiving the kindness, the benevolence of this shared space. Breathing back out that goodwill. As though goodwill were exuding from every pore. Filling up the space around you. Till you feel increasingly relaxed, held in this field of loving kindness.
And from this place, just widen the sphere of your awareness. To include the space to the north, the southeast, just allowing the intentions of loving kindness to spread. In every direction, including above and below. Connecting to the benevolence, the goodness of all beings who may be out there, close by or far away. Receiving unconditional love. through every pore and spreading that love back outward with every breath out. Make it effortless, no need to worry too much about whether you're breathing in or breathing out. But just see if you can sustain this perception being connected to all beings through loving kindness, through goodwill, whoever and wherever they are. Trusting in the benevolence of this universe. Allowing yourself to be held. Imagining all beings also experiencing this sense of being completely accepted, completely loved. Whoever and wherever they are, whatever they've done, however they view the world. All beings, yourself included, just bathed in unconditional universal love. As so though the whole universe were 
holding you. The stars twinkling with loving kindness. Not only your body and mind relax, but even the sense of self. And you realize there's nothing to do but to be. You're already loved. You're already held. You're already being breathed. With each breath, you imbibe the benevolence of the universe. With each breath out, you contribute to the benevolence, the kindness, the peace in the world. Automatically, without effort. Simply because you exist.
And from this perspective of, <clears throat> of universal love, which contains and includes every being, seen or unseen, we realize that whole groups of people are included. automatically those living in harmony those in conflict and war Imagining all beings for a moment knowing that they are enough. They don't need to fight. They can be at peace live in harmony and ease. So starting to bring in Specific beings, maybe people of different countries, people you know. People who are hungry or sick, who are living in fear. And imagine them too, feeling held, feeling safe, being completely at peace. No different from us. May all beings remember for a moment or for the whole of their lives that they have these seeds of loving kindness and peace inside. May all beings be a force for goodness a force for love. All beings, including our political leaders, people from who with different views from us, who may vote for different parties, for better or for worse. May all beings remember we're here to serve and contribute peace, harmony, 
equity to this world. Recognizing the goodness in every being, the potential for awakening that each of us have, whatever our views, Those views are shaped and conditioned by our experiences in life. <coughs> and may all beings, even those we differ from or disagree with, those who we believe cause harm. May we remember that their true nature, their potential is to love. They too desire peace, desire true happiness. I'm bringing this metta, this universal metta, closer to home, to our families and friends, perhaps to the people we find difficult in our lives, maybe the abbot of the monastery, our boss at work. Maybe a parent or even a child. To all those whose lives we somehow touch and are touched by, may they all be happy and well. May we learn to see one another's potential for awakening. and relate with kindness to that. So allowing any faces, images of these people you know to come to mind. and imbuing them, showering them with loving kindness. Recognizing that they too are already held in this universal love. And gradually from many to maybe just one or two, 
bringing your metta, concentrating that metta on perhaps a very close person in your life, maybe a good friend, someone who inspires you, like a teacher, a benefactor. nephew or a niece, maybe if you're fortunate, a very dear parent, but someone you don't have too many complicated emotions towards, someone you find fairly easy to bathe with loving kindness. And see if you can notice that feeling inside. Perhaps there's a warmth around the chest or a general sense of uplift or ease when you bring this person or maybe a couple of people to mind. People you feel safe and happy around. And finally, recognizing that you too are a loved person to these beings. You too are worthy to be regarded with love. Just as others wish for your well-being and ease. Allow yourself to receive your own good wishes. May I be truly happy and content. Recognizing that from this perspective of universal love, I'm one among all beings. May my actions of body, speech, mind, as far as possible, contribute to peace, to harmony, and to healing in this world. May I forgive myself for my perceived shortcomings. And offer myself unconditional love. Understanding I behave as I do due to all the conditioning, the influences, the opportunities, lack of opportunities I've received. But 
Wherever I go, whatever I do, may I trust my own goodness and capacity for peace. Just noticing any feelings in your body connected with loving kindness, perhaps a sense of relaxation, ease, warmth, lightness, whatever pleasant or neutral feelings you experience right now and just staying connected, soaking them in. As I chant the final blessing. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Purgala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabe Itio Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anaria Sabe Dewa Sabe Munusa Sabe Wini Padika I wave out on to Ani gaunti Sukiatana pariharatu Dukha munjantu Yadalada sampadito Mawe gajantu Kama Saka Sadhu 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 from outward to inward. I don't know how that went for you. I was inspired by our guest, Cynthia. <laughs> I don't know if that was quite how she practices, but there we go. Hopefully something a little bit different, maybe some perceptions that can be helpful from time to time. Just take whatever seems to work different things at different times. I make it up on the spot pretty much. So you can do the same in your practice. You can uh, just go for something, some sort of perception that can help to bring that sense of uh, softness and um, acceptance to the mind. So someone said, thanks for that wonderful meditation. It's very healing. Uh, sometimes it's nice just to Bring up perceptions and do nothing. Let them kind of work through us. Thanks for the wonderful meditation. Other times, I mean, here, you know, I tried to find a 
combination of guidance and silence, probably quite a bit of guidance today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Or are you an Ajahn now and everyone? Yeah, I don't believe in Ajahns being things because to me that's a title, but I have actually been ordained for 18 years. So for the Bhikkhuni Sangha, this is a little bit like we don't get the full ordination straight away. It takes eight years for me. So I don't know, you know, uh, 10 years as a nun, 10 years as a bikini. I have actually 10 buses as a bikini, but uh, I think most bikinis don't use Ajahn. Some do, some don't. Um, to me, it's, it's a role rather than a title. Like Ajahn means teacher. Hmm? So, and I think also probably, be, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's really a personal choice. I think for monks in the, particularly Thai forest tradition or what was the Thai forest tradition. It's something you have, it's like a, you, bec you become an Ajahn at Ten Vasa, right? But because the Bikini Sangha was never really accepted anyway into the Thai forest tradition, and that's a Thai word, um, I think we don't tend to pick it up so much. So all monks and nuns can be called venerable no matter their reigns. Uh, so I kind of like that. But I don't mind, you know, you can call me what you wish. <laughs> some people yeah someone here sometimes says ma'am <laughs> so that's interesting and if I go to India they say Mahatmaji or Mataji or something like this so yeah whatever we're salmoners <laughs> basically we're salmoners anyway long long answer to a simple question <laughs> you are a tear now yeah you mean a terry I'm a there I belong to everyone yeah a terry I'm a Terry. That's right. Yeah, bikinis often just say Terry, or you know, for monks it's Terra. When you're like Ten Vasa, you're a Terra. So that's the kind of official kind of, if you want, title. But it just means like a certain um, amount of time in robes. Yeah. Actually, my first teacher called me Chanda Terry. That was my actual name when I ordained. It wasn't Chanda Visuddhi. It wasn't just Chanda. It was Chanda Terry. So that's, I suppose, my real name. <laughs> whatever that means. Anyway, are there any meditation comments, questions or complaints? <laughs> Just because you have the opportunity right now, I'm hoping to give you another opportunity uh, to meet, for us to meet together before I go to Perth. But looking at my list of things to do, I can't promise, but I'd really love to if I can. So although there won't be any more Friday or Saturday sessions, there'll be Meta chanting on the 10th and the 17th of July. We still have to update the website, but you're hearing it from me, so <laughs> it is correct. Uh, two meta sessions, 10th as in chanting, 10th and 17th, 5.30 p.m. And if I can, somewhere around the middle of July, midweek, I'm going to do like a little um, meeting just so we can talk about something, maybe a Dhamma discussion more than a talk, but I can lead a guided meditation, something like that. So that will probably be in a newsletter, and if not on Facebook, it might be somewhat last minute. So whatever I can, however I can serve, I'll try. And after that, um, I'm leaving you in the hands of trusted monastic teachers who are going to um, offer some teachings to you for the next few months. Okay, so I wish you all really, really well. Thanks for the kind uh, messages and good wishes. Uh, we still have four minutes. If anybody suddenly gets a comment or a question they'd like to share, or you can just say goodbye. Raise your hands, say goodbye. <clears throat> anything, anything. The room is silent. Thank you very much. In the meditation, I found peace in the notion that there's the possibility of making peace with absolutely everything. And it's not in the outer world, but within. Beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing the wisdom we have inside actually and we just sometimes need to remember it or need a space to just be quiet for a while and connect with other people and then we get our own insights you know we get our own insights from the practice not from the guidance beautiful <laughs> don't you have a detail like to say anything more? oh no 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 so it's a shame when there's another asset you don't see them, but there they are. You feel soft. <coughs> I felt my brain was soft, warm brain. It's a good oh, feeling. Nice. 
warm brain. <laughs> that felt a sort of melting, a sort of expansion, like sort of floating for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Anything that Julian would like man. to say? Peace, man. Peace, man. We've got three people going like this. Not only me, it's the guests. Do you mind being on there? Would you like to say peace to everyone? Peace. Peace from Julian. <laughs> We've no idea about you. How about our other guests? Also peace. Okay, so hopefully that will spread to the political leaders. <laughs> Okay, the, the computer's on a slant now, so it's all going pear-shaped, and I guess I should say goodbye, because the computer's gone like that, and I think we all have our weekend to enjoy, so. Uh, and thank you, thank you very much for being well. Um, so today may be the, the last Metta session for Saturday for, for a while, and uh, thank you very much for the wonderful session. And for all of us, we have a um, lot of Metta meditation recordings in the YouTube, so maybe you can continue on Saturdays uh, until Venerable returns. And there's so much other um, uh, teachings in the YouTube as well. And... Uh, so as you know, all these teachings, regular teachings, venerable, uh, and the other um, bhikkhunis and bhikkhus come to uh, Anukampa project and uh, give these teachings uh, on a voluntary basis, so free of charge, and uh, we look after them and help <laughs> their um, help to sustain and to um, um, further their path. And also Anukampa is holding this space for a new bikunis to come and ordain for uh, women to have a place to ordain. Um, and so we are, you know, maintaining this place and uh, looking after Venerable and the future bikunis um, and also the physical monastery uh, at Oxford. Um, yeah, there's... <laughs> As we, we kind of set the pace and it is like up to the up to the women and you know vulnerable time and everything you know the future is there so what i ask from uh, you the community is to um uh, to help to look after the the anukampa bikuni project and the main um uh, help that you can give at this time is a financial donations. Anything small is not too small. Um, and uh, we have to do all the uh, looking after, I mean, from the food to the medicine to um, uh, to looking after the bricks, the mortar, everything. And, uh, you know, repairing, changing the place into a monastery from a house, so many things. Um and also, uh, when Bachanda put uh, the link, Events link. it is uh, all spellings correct. And uh, I can put as well, there is a link, link, proper link. Uh, so, you know, check the, check the events. It will be updated. And the best thing for you to do is to subscribe to a newsletter. So, you know, all the changes, all the new events that is coming and, you know, write your email. Um, so look look at that, and um, uh, in the future, long term, for the lay people, they can go and experience uh, the monastery <laughs> as well. But um, uh, yesterday, we were told that most of the 2025 is already booked. So maybe you can have a look. Um, maybe you can uh, contact team at anukampaproject.org if you want to visit um, after November, you can yeah. contact or from November. Yeah, so um, I probably won't be looking at application forms at all until November. So um, from now, we're not really taking new applications, but we already have a lot of guests booked in for next year. It's not full. It's not completely full. There are periods that it is completely full, but it's not completely full. But we'll um, consider more applications in November. Yeah, yeah. And there won't be any dana needs now for these couple of weeks. That is lunch dana, right? So yes, the lunch dana, dana food dana, dana, food dana. Food dana. Um, and but then once venerable returns, um, you can you if you want to wish to offer a food dana, um, 
you can contact the team at Anukampa Project Dotoga as well. There's a calendar as well in the website. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Manoe. Yeah, we'll have to restart all the systems <laughs> when I'm back. But there's no big rush because I got a few things. I got a few things. It's not going to be back to normal straight away. So uh yeah. We also have Bente Sajata coming to visit in January. So, you know, there's a few bits which won't be kind of quite the same. But uh yeah, in the meantime, then we have some caretakers to look after the place. And we have some renovation work. We have to do some roof insulation. We have to clean the roof. We have to do some plumbing. So quite a few jobs. Um, and the next year we want to get on to like an uh, office. We don't have an office. We only have a corner in the garage, which is damp and cold. Uh, and uh, ideally a cootie, at least one. Start off with the cooties because then we have more space, right? And the monastics get their time and their solitude too. So uh, yeah, lastly, just finishing with one more comment. Thank you. I feel so much better, more peaceful, accepting. I have to go now. All right. I think Sean already left, but thanks to everyone. Thanks to Minori too, and to the wonderful co-host, to Matthias, to Minori, who are here every session, pretty much. It's amazing. And they'll still be around, I think, during the summer as well. So take care, everyone. All the very best. You can unmute if you wish and wave goodbye. <laughs>